chapter 10, financial, the financial plan. In this section, we'll talk about the financial plan part of the whole business plan, which is, it's one of the main thing, uh, usually uh, an investor or a banker will ask you for it. And basically they want to see if they are uh, supposed to lend you the money or lend you the resources that you can utilize. Now in this chapter, we'll talk about uh, the financial plan provide a complete picture of how much uh, uh, and when fund in, enter the organization. So whether you are funding or somebody else is funding, they want to see when the fund comes in and by how much. So they might be able to fund you um, some amount this month, another amount next month, and six months amount this month. And also where their fund are going. So they want to see whether where you're spending this fund and how much cash is available. They want to see whether you have a cash or is it sales is happening that you're generating some cash from it. And the projected financial position of the firm in each month. The financial plan provides a short-term basis for budgeting and prevent a common problem, lack of cash. Most of the uh, companies that cause bankruptcy or fails in the business is they go through because they have a lack of cash. So if they want to, the financial plan will help you to avoid this problem of lack of cash. The plan uh, explain how the entrepreneur will meet the obligation and maintain the liquidity. Basically, you know, when you do a sale in sales, there is a cash coming in. So how you are, um, when you're getting this sale uh, cash and how you're doing to maintain your liquidity, able to close all the expenses that you have occurred monthly. So in general, the plan will need a three years of projected financial date uh, for outside investors. So they need, need to see how they, when they're putting this money in, how they gonna, how you gonna make sure that the money is being in a safe hand and is helping in generating more money and more income and there is a revenue for, for the investor. And he wants to see whether he's gonna put it in somewhere other, other plans or other entrepreneurs or with you or in a bank in a safeguard. Now, um, the issue comes in with the budgeting. So the, the, the goal also in a financial plan, you usually need to do some kind of a, a budgeting. You need to budget these things. So before you developing a pre pro forma income statement, prepare the uh, operating and capital budget. How much you need to operate? What kind of things you need to operate? In the case of sole proprietors, which is one person owns the business, or usually sole proprietors are responsible for all the budgeting decisions. So where they're gonna put the money, how they're gonna spend it, where they need the money is their own responsibilities. And a partner or an employee may initiate the budgeting process, but you as a you know entrepreneur, you're in charge of that uh, budgeting approvals and all uh, initiate uh, budgeting. A sales budget must be developed. Expected sales per month. As we said, sales is like the the, the air that you breathe to keep to stay alive. The sales is the main thing when somebody is. Uh, it's trying to be willing to lend you its own resources or cash. So a sales budget must be developed. They wanna see how much you expected sales by month. It doesn't have to be in the first month or second month. It could be negative, could be zero, 
uh, I mean, I know zero, but in the, in the, when you're gonna start making sales and by how much. So the entrepreneur determines the cost of these sales. Include an ending inventory to buffer against the demand fluctuation. So here's the issues here. When you're producing something, it's gonna be sold or put in the warehouse. So in the, if you're producing 10 units this month and you sold five units, and there is a 15 or 20 units next month needed to be sold. You already have a five unit in your warehouse. So all you need is a 15. So this is the reason why you need to include an ending inventory to buffer against the demand fluctuation. And you might not, you might just suddenly have a increased demand like the last video we saw in the uh, last week about uh, you know Halloween. So you have already have some in the warehouse and you just want to top up that amount. Uh, production budget allows uh, projected cash flow for the cost of goods produced, including the inventories. And the reason you're writing these, you're estimating this because the investor wants to see how much is, is needed to um, you know, to uh, to put a cash in that time for you to produce. This provides an actual production need each month to meet the demand. It determines how much is spent and for what purpose. So. Uh, Operating budget and capital budget. There is two budget that you need to, to manage. One is the operating budget, that's uh, money that you're gonna spend and you need to spend on a daily work. And capital budget is things that you need to buy to set up your own business. For operating costs, List fixed expenses and calculating variable expenses, which vary with the sales or marketing strategy. So as we said, maybe there is certain time of the year you need to do more marketing, uh, less marketing certain time of year, certain time of year you need to do, there's more sales coming in, so you need to operate there's more operating expenses happening. So the, this variation, it's need to be listed. To, so, and it's a reason for it is not only the people who wants to invest in you, is the people who will be working with you, they need to see that. This budget and the manufacturing budget are the basis for the pre forma statement. And I think you're gonna see it or you saw it in the videos, why these are, important. Capital budget, on the other hand, are used for evaluating expenditure that may impact for the business for more than one year. Any expenditure, anything, so you're buying a car, a truck, or a, a heavy machineries, or some machineries that it will be more than a year, and I think you took it in accounting also, this is part of the capital budget. Now, a new equipment, vehicle, computers, or new facilities, these are capital budget decision, may include the evaluation of the make or buy decision uh, in the manufacturing or in comparison of leasing and buying any, whether you wanna sell, buy it, or you wanna lease it, you wanna make it, or you wanna produce it uh, or buy it, 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 this is, will affect your, uh, you know, uh, once you evaluate it, you will have, it will put in your capital budget. Enlist accountant assistant for a large project. So if you have a large project, then you need an accountant. Uh, if it's, you're starting a small business and you don't need an accountant, uh, you can do the accounting by using the Excel sheet and there is some application that we will talk about it in later. Now, here is the most 
important that any investor or any partner is looking at it is the forecasting of sales. There are many methods for projecting sales and most startups rely on more quantity qualitative methods. Now, to project a sale, simply and reasonably using a qualitative method means a startup in the same industry can provide an expectation for early sales. So somebody who starts up a business similar to you, you can check on them and they might tell you what expected sales. Now, also local chambers of commerce or business organization may provide information on expected first year sales. Sales estimates may be wrong no matter what approach is used. You can, you know, it, it, it is a prediction. It is, so the best way you can do the maximize and minimize level of sales, where you can sell that high or you can sell that low. This is what's happening with, later on we'll talk about a break even. So estimate sales at a several level reflecting the contingency uh, estimates. So in the case of I'm selling 10 units, it's different than case I'm selling 100 units. This is calculation need to be done. The pro forma income statement requires monthly projections. Seasonalities should be reflected in the sale figures. And you know that probably some days there is more sales than some other days. Certain months you have better sales, like now the retail stores are getting ready for, for uh, Christmas. So there is more, they're expecting more sales in this, these few months than uh, after in January, for example. Retail stores went, goes dead in January and February. So these are uh, uh, part of your pro forma income statements that you need to do it monthly on monthly basis to show it in your business plan on monthly basis. Now, they, in the end, the bottom line, we, any investor need to look at the pre forma income statement. So in order for them to risk their resources or risk their ink monies with you, they like, they like to see a, a, a pre forma or a pre income statement. For, to do that, first you need to calculate sales per month when you're performing uh, the pre forma income statement. You can have this um, probably the general things in the business plan, but the details, the Excel as, as appendix in the end of the uh, business plan so people can look at it uh, and start putting numbers, see how things work out. And the first thing you need to do is calculate the sales per month when they're preparing the pre forma income statement. Cost of the sales can be disproportionately higher in some month and some month is low. And uh, the reason is for many reason could be the variable, the variable cost of the product that you're gonna bring in might cost higher and sometimes, sometimes lower. Or um, uh, the other variable cost can be affecting uh, the, the, the cost of the sales. Sales revenue for the internet startup may be difficult to project, but it's because you, one of the thing is depend on your activities and how effective and efficient your activities on the internet. And at the same time, because you are also looking at um, how powerful in, in the information, how you good is strong in the, utilizing this internet and the market, it could be, very much open, covering lots of uh, uh, you know uh, territories, so it's difficult to pro to, to to project. Um, the and also you are very much in a competitive situation. I mean, instead of coming and buying from you on internet, they can go and buy from Amazon. Maybe they are have cheaper, or they're more secure, or many reasons that it's hard to project. The pre forma income statement provide 
uh, decisions for operating expenses for each month uh, of this year or first year. So in a, in a way, I do have an operating, when I start my business, I have the capital budget and operating budget. So I need monthly money comes in to pay the rent, to pay the hydro, to pay anything else that monthly expenses. So selling expenses as a percentage of sales may be initial also higher. So in the beginning, I might be taking more trips to make one sale, and, but once I'm, I'm selling a lot, the word of mouth makes it easier for others to come and buy and instead of I'm taking more trips or effort to sell. So uh, selling expenses in the beginning might be really higher, but then uh, it goes lower. And it is as a percentage of sales may be initially, you know, as we said, it's higher. So cost of goods sold can be an industry standard or computed per unit. You need to see the cost of the goods sold, which is uh, read off the fixed cost and the variable cost. You calculate them. So that's tell you cost of so sold uh, variables could be um, um, per, uh, done per unit, but the fixed cost divided by all the units. Um, investors usually prefer a projection for two to three years. Never, you know, you, you need to show them within two to three years how this business is this business gonna last. As you notice lots of businesses for, for example, in restaurant, food industry, usually last three to six months because they're not, you know, for some reason, they're not doing a good uh, job. Maybe they have the washrooms dirty, may have the menu is confusing, maybe the service is bad or some quality of the food. These are all affecting in the restaurants, for example. But as we said, investors prefer projections for two, for years, two and three. Some expenses remain stable, otherwise use year one as a guide. So if you have a rent that you might be thinking is an increase at 20%, so you use the first year as guide and the second year you might add a 20% on the rent or the whole fixed cost 20% or something like that. You might use the first year and, you know, if you're expanding in, the, in that might be, you know, use the first year as, as a base and you can add on. But overall be conservative when you're projecting operating expenses. So don't show too much expenses and don't show too low expenses because too much will keep the investor running away from you and too low will be unbelievable uh, unexpected investors uh, usually and bankers know the market, how much it costs in general, or if they don't know, they will investigate, they will check and they will know if you're trying to be, you know, just pulling their leg in and then you get them stuck in it. So be conservative when you do that. Now you, as we said, the main goal of your whole business is to generate sales. But to generate sales, the, the result of generating sales is generating cash. Now we have two types of cash. One is a credit and one that you might not be collecting it now later on. And sometimes, no, you get paid right away. So the cash flow is not the same as a profit. You might be very profitable, but you have a very limited cash inflow versus a cash outflow. And that might cause you to go in a bankruptcy or asking more loans to be more in debt. So you need to know the speed that how fast you can collect your cash is a very important. So the, it is the difference of cash receipts and the cash payment. As you know, a depreciation is an expense, reducing your profit, not cash outlay. 
So once you do, a, you know, you, you utilize your equipment, there is a depreciation involved for them also. So you need to look at how much this equipment that you bought, how, how many years it's worth. If even you have to do it in the, for an income tax too. So, and if it's, it can be, uh, you know, the, the salvage years or five years or 10 years, you need to reduce the cost. Uh, depreciation of price. So we, you, you put it in the part of your pro forma, um, you know, budgeting. The two to standard uh, method of projection, direct and indirect uh, one. The indirect method are just net income for cash, not yet in or out. So it's the indirect one, you say how much cash I have in my hand right now. It's not, it's not coming in. You don't calculate the money out and not the money goes out. The direct method is simply determination of cash is less than cash and less cash out. And you have to do these two and keep them into consideration why they are able to be helping you. First of all, as we said, best of the businesses, lots of business goes to bankruptcies because they do not calculate the cash in hand. And suddenly they have to spend, and the two things they do, they go and borrow, so there is more cost on their operating, or they go bankruptcy if they don't give them anybody's cash. The second thing that you need to calculate is simply cash in less than cash out. So um, um, you need to see the flow of the cash when you are having enough and uh, more that you can expand or you can you know, stay as, as a conservative. So a monthly projection of cash is a performa of cash flow. When outflow is greater than inflow, funds, to be secured. So you can go back to, to the investors, might give you some fund to, to uh, how to secure. Invest large short-term source of positive cash inflow, cash flow. The negative cash flow are likely to, for a new venture, so estimate conservatively to cash, to cover the cash, month. You know, when you start your business, there is more spending than money is coming in. And probably that would last, depend on the type of the business. It might be last six months, three months, six months, or one year. You don't know how long it's going to take. You do because your own business. So you need to be a conservative. Don't show that you need too much money so that, or once again, the investor will see a heavy spending or you need less money where you, when you come in and suddenly you tell the investor, I need more than what projected, they will say, sorry, I don't have that money. So you need to be conservative. And, but that's not a status quo. You can revise the projection and provide scenario based on that, on a different sale. So as we said, you, you always need to see the maximum sales in that month and minimum sales of that month, because this is will be determining everything, your costs, your fixed costs, your variable costs, the money that is needed, all these process, the break even, uh, it will clear from that. So the sales, it is the, the base thing will be you doing your all the budgeting um, uh, estimations. Now, in the bottom line, you need to do a pre a balance sheet. So you need to show that how much you, uh, you know, how you are balancing this thing, whether there is a shortage of cash you're getting from the investors, the bank, or there is an excess of cash, which is, can you have, what are you gonna do with it? More investment, expansion, or you save it for the future when the sales is really bottom. 
Uh, the performa balance sheet reflects the company's position at the end of one year. Assets uh, represent everything of value owned by the business. So you, you took in, uh, I think in accounting, what's asset liabilities and owner's equities. And just to go briefly, assets represent everything of value owned by the business. Current assets include cash, anything that can be convertible within a year, like whatever you have that you can change it to a cash within a year. Uh, fixed assets are tangible, uh, but are used for a long period of time. So any machineries, for example, um, if you have a warehouse you own, this is a fixed asset uh, used for all of that. Then you have, when you have these assets, you have liabilities and then the liabilities is represent everything owned to the creditors. So like if I'm renting a house, I have a liability of that much monthly payment, for example, or if I bought a car, a truck, I own to the bank that much that's to the creditor, so that liability. And you have the current liability are owed within a year, unlike the long-term liabilities, which is, you know, loans for four or five years, that's a, a long-term liabilities. And the difference between them is the owner equity, which is, is owner equity is the excess of all assets over liabilities. Owner equity represent the net worth of the business. You might start with a negative, but then it's supposed to move step by step to a positive. Any profit is included in the net worth or uh, as return earning. So if the asset minus liability is positive, then you get an, a return earning there. Now let's talk about the break even, but I think the video can explain, uh, did explain it that for you. It is, uh, this is a technique to determine how many units needs to sell to break even. Sales must cover a fixed cost obligation. So I wanna see how many units I need to sell in order to do a break even because with the break even, unless I, I know the benchmark for it, I know how much units I have to sell in order to come over that hill. So a break even is that volume of sales at which the business will neither make a profit nor incur a loss. It's covering the fixed cost and the variable cost. Variable cost could be, you know, the salaries, the electricities, uh, anything that uh, the, the, the units that you buy to proceed, to process it, these are variable costs. A fixed cost that we talked about it is anything that, you know, a machinery is um, a house that you, a warehouse that you bought or uh, bought, for example. So the break even a formula is, TFC, total fixed cost over uh, minus variable per unit. And we don't need to talk that much about it. It, it is, it, this is one of the things that you, when you set up a business, you are targeting the, uh, the break-even uh, analysis because you wanna show when you're gonna go uh, over the hill. Where, whereas your revenue is higher than your profit, your revenue higher than your cost, and if, which is will result in a profit. So an investor wants to see when is a pro, your business will be turning to a profitable business. So that's uh, even you, you need to know that also. So, um, Now, um, so in, in this case here, there is pre-forma source and application of funds. 
the preform source and application of font statement shows the disposition of earning from operations and other financing. Now, its purpose is to show how net income and financing were used to increase the assets and pay off the debt is basically to show how I'm gonna make more assets and it could be a cash one of them and how I'm gonna pay off uh, the, the truck that I bought, the warehouse that I spent and the material, the raw material that I, I got. It's often difficult to understand how the net income of, a, of the year was disposed of. Typically, it is um, typical source of funds are from operation, new investment, uh, long-term borrowing and sales of assets. And major uses or application of funds are to increase assets, retaining long-term liabilities, reduce the owner equity and pay dividends. The statement emphasized the interrelationship of these items working capitals. The whole picture of this, it's about details of how I'm gonna operate in a number wise, how much I'm gonna make sales, how much costing me, what's my fixed cost, what's my variable cost, what's the operation cost, all these things. And then the bottom also to see how much profit I'm making, is this profit uh, sufficient or, or, or not? Is, is how, if I'm, how I'm gonna pay my dividends, these are all issues that any investor or a banker wants to see that. Okay, to do that, there are several software packages that can track the financial data and generate the financial statement. Uh, Excel sheet is one of, you know, good spread, uh, you know, the, the spreadsheet are the easiest and Microsoft Excel is widely used. So you can use this as a startup. Using this a spreadsheet in the startup phase help present different scenarios and assets and assess their impact on pre-form perform statement. If you don't know how to use the calculations, the formulas there, take a course. There's lots of courses online. You can find it on YouTube. With it. And they're easy to you know, manage them. They're, they're, they're not, it's not difficult. You saw how they are doing that. In the startup stage, when the venture is a small and resources limited, you can use a software like, you know, simply a QuickBook. There is lots of software that you don't need even to buy them. You can rent them on monthly basis. And most of them have how to allow you to write a check, to do the payroll, invoicing, doing the inventory management. They are all have these things, bill paying credit management and how to do the taxes. I think uh, QuickBooks is one of the mostly used one in North America. So these are the softwares you might wanna use them. Now, so uh, this is the end of the chapter and thank you very much.